Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're dealing with the dreaded engine management light. Hi guys, as I said on the inside there, I've got a bit of an issue today in that the couple of weeks ago the engine management light came on. Uh, I've done the scan and the knock sensors are at fault. So let's have a look what that means, how we fix them uh, and what you need to do to then clear the subsequent fault codes. So let's see what's going on to cause this um, fault code. So we'll click read fault code. And as you can see, knock sensor to current, current and stored uh, electrical failure. So let's jump on in ahead, uh, show you where those are under the engine and let's get it fixed. So basically on the car, you've got the turbo set up here and then you go into the whole EGR, SCR, CAT, um, system uh, and and the ad blue injection system down there uh, and you have these two sensors which are called knock sensors so you've got this one here which if you see a fault code for uh, bank one that's the first sensor and then there's another one on the car which we'll look at later which is number two and number two is the one that's currently failed now there's lots of thoughts as well on the lovely internet you know should you replace both if one goes if one goes the other one can't be far behind I've actually bitten the bullet because I just want to get this job done and I'm going to replace both. And there's talk about all sorts of different mileages when they can go. I've seen really low, really high. This car's sitting on about 100,000 miles, 160,000 kilometres. So that seems to be middle of the path for the course. So I've removed the engine cover uh, and separately, you'll see I've already jacked up the car and taken off the back under tray, but we'll see that later. Uh, and we just need to replace this sensor now. Let me put this over here. So you basically have this little control module that plugs into the car. And then at this end, you actually have the sensor itself, which is just a little probe. And it comes with a plastic cap, with, which is protecting it. Um, you can see it here uh, at the top. Uh, the fitting underneath is exactly the same, but for light and ease of seeing, you can watch this one. You need to undo this um, nut here, which is a 22 millimeter uh, nut. Uh, it was on a little, it took a little bit of difficulty just to crack that off because I looked at this last night to see whether I could clean it or any other options. Um, it definitely needed a good crack to get it off, but it shouldn't be that tight. I'm guessing it's probably just over time. There is a bit of Loctite on there as well, so that probably didn't help. And then you just need to unclip it from, unclip the wire from these couple of connectors and then on the one at the front here you have this external eight fitting the one under the car is a 10 millimeter fitting and it's a very simple job of just undoing the nut the bolt here there's one just under here and then using a suitable pick to uh, flick out this wiring connector and then put it back in it couldn't be more uh, simple so I'm going to just show you how we do that on this top one and what it looks like underneath. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully we're then in a position to reset the engine management light. So as we said, first job is just to undo this nut. Now you might need to hold this actual injector part with a set of pliers or something. I had to underneath um, just because it just wouldn't quite uh, spin freely. So you undo this and then that pops out and you've got this sort of little injector nozzle. Then very carefully you just need to free it from the, the clips noting the way the wiring is held in place. Now what's always useful is of course to um, just take a, a picture uh, with your phone before you start if you're unsure how the wiring uh, is held and you obviously on this particular one you have to make sure that uh, when you're doing this that the engine is cold because this whole area is ridiculously hot um, yeah to make sure you don't burn yourself because this is obviously the really hot part of the engine so we've got this cable seems to go down here just following where it's held in place comes back up and then we just need to now undo the nut that I spoke to you about a moment ago just looking around let me get my 
So yeah, just need your <clears throat> bit of T8 here, or external 8, I think it's called. this open it's quite a strong smell in there of sort of these are certain build up is unsurprising really because that's still the dirty side um, of the engine so take the bolt out and then having freed all the cable from its various clips we should just be able to work it through the existing cabling got this uh, sensor here so you just take your little pick put that in So you're just trying to pull down on that and out and then that will release it and there you have your existing sensor okay so the replacement cart part comes with uh, the kit I've got uh, the part numbers seem to vary because they've been superseded over time <clears throat> or uh, also because the cables have different lengths so this one's slightly shorter the cable underneath is about um, 10 centimeters longer. So as they say, uh, we just need to install that new part back on uh, and then I'll come back to you. So that's the new sensor installed and the screw there you can see, one you can't quite see just under here. There is good access if you put your hand under here, not a problem. And then you've got a clip here, another clip here and then not sure if you can see it, but just down under there is the top of another clip as well. And they just they just push in and we've done that up. So that's the top sensor. The uh, underneath one is very, very similar, but uh, I'll just show you um, how and where it's located, but I'm not going to do it because obviously the procedure is exactly the same. So as you can see, I've just got a car on a couple of blocks of wood. I've, I've jacked it up here and just rested it on there with this with because i've got the air suspension as well the air suspension in the air that gives you enough access so as long as you can get about foot clearance under here you're all right so i've removed the uh, the middle uh, under tray which you can see on the floor then i've shown you how to do that in other videos and i'll put a link up to the corner when we were doing the um, oil change video to show you how to remove that and then what you then need to do just get the camera in here is just remove these there's two push pins here uh, that you need to remove fixings and this drops down just up as you look in the top right corner of the screen you can see the back of the sensor and that is held in place with two 10 millimeter bolts so you can see the little flap there that's hanging down that's where i was a minute ago uh, in there hopefully the camera's picking it up is is the sensor um, control unit that's two 10 millimeter bolts as opposed to the external eights at the front why they're different who knows and then the cable again is just held on about three clips and roots over to the sensor that's on the top of the exhaust there. And I found I had to actually hold the sensor body with a pair of pliers. That was just enough, very lightly, but it was enough to stop uh, the nut from uh, basically a caught on the, on the thread. And that was just enough to allow the nut to move independently to unscrew it. So so we've done the job now. What we need to do is clear the fault code and we need to initialize the teaching uh, program. Now, on my machine here, I can't do teaching, um, but because I renew both at the same time, there shouldn't be a mismatch and the car will sort of work it out, so I've been told. That said, the car is actually going into Mercedes next week uh, for some other work, and I will ask them to do the program on the star system. 
but this should be okay for the moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just confirm the fork coast style present that we saw earlier. Okay, so we now go uh, go back, and then we go clear fork code. Are you want to sure you want to clear? Yes. So that allegedly has now been cleared. Let's have another look. Read fault code, no faults. So if we start the engine now, then hopefully... Check engine light has gone out. Uh, clearly we need to wait for a test drive because I have previously cleared it, but it um, was coming back after about 100 kilometers. So I've got no way of knowing if that's absolutely cleared the fault, but unless you hear otherwise, let's assume it has. So there you are. Hopefully you find that video useful. As you can see, it's a really, really simple job. Um, and you can clearly buy even original parts much, much cheaper than you can buy from the Mercedes garage. And there's really no need to pay Mercedes an hour for you to do that work. The only thing you might struggle with, of course, is the coding. Um, but I suspect that most people who do maintenance on these cars these days, you have to have some kind of code reader or equivalent just to access functions and clear codes. Um, and it's just really that teaching process. Again, depending where you live, there's lots of people who do these sort of things and coding online and, and you can get stuff done really quite reasonably. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will clear the, clear the fault. Uh, I'm sure it will. Uh, and then we can have uh, uh, another 100,000 miles, hopefully of relatively easy motoring uh, without the fault reoccurring. Um, as ever, if you like the video, please comment. Uh, you know, even better if you subscribe. That's the way the channel grows um, uh, and of course better for everybody to spread the word about how simple some of this stuff is. So see you in the next video. Have a nice day.